now taking up uh, medicine in uh, Adventist University of the Philippines in Silang, Cavite. So what a blessing. What a blessing for me. Especially that when I remember when I came from. What a blessing. May I bring with you a, a message from the book of Acts chapter 13? Would you please stand up with me as uh, we would like to read together? In Acts chapter 13, verse 36, John, just one verse for tonight. Just one verse, verse 36, Acts chapter 13. Please read with me, begin. For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell on sleep and was laid on his fathers and so corruption. Our Heavenly Father God, we thank you, Lord, for the privilege of worshiping you, God. We thank you, Lord, for the way you have blessed our homes, our family, our churches, our ministry. Thank you, God, for the church here, being led by your man, Pastor Hernan Sabante. Thank you, Lord, for the people that you gave him to serve you together in this place. Bless them, Lord, as they were about to celebrate their anniversary and the ministry here. And God, thank you again for your word that we will study. Speak to us, illumine our hearts, help us through your Holy Spirit. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. For David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God. Now let me tell you, brothers, this, this is the only your time. This is the only time that I could serve God. There could be no other time. It is our time. Amen? Amen. It says, David after had served his own generation. Well, I could say that uh, from 1976 to the present, I served the Lord. I have been in the church ministry and served him for more than 40 years. And uh, became the pastor for the past 35 years. But I could not say that those years are enough to say, Lord, I'll stop serving you. There is no way for a real Christian to stop serving God. If we are truly saved and we are so tr truly thankful for the Lord, for our salvation, uh, serving God is not a matter of years. It is a matter of life. Amen. It is a matter of life. Pastor, would you allow me to sing? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah, you know, uh, maybe the young people would say that this song is for the oldest. <laughs> but I love this song. Yeah. It entitles, The Longer I Serve Him, The Sweeter He Goes. Meron po bang magpa-piano, please? Somebody to play the piano with me. Well, forgive me if I forget the words because I'm senior citizen. Since I started for the kingdom, since my life He controls, since I gave my heart to Jesus, the longer I serve Him, the sweeter He grows. The longer I serve Him, the sweeter He grows. The more that I love Him, more love He bestows. Each day is like heaven, my heart overflows. The longer I serve Him, the 
the sweeter he grows every day he's supplying plenteous grace he bestows day is like heaven my heart overflows the longer I serve him the sweeter he grows thank you sister isn't it that's true the longer we serve the Lord the more he bestows. The more that we love him, more love he bestows. We cannot outlove our God. Amen. 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 Especially when we know where we came from. Amen. We came from a being a sinner and saved by the grace of Amen. God. David, after he had served his own generation. Now, I remember in the 70s, there was a widow woman who migrated to Las Piñas. They came from Mandaluyong. And she would not allow the, the Holy Sunday, Holy Sabbath day without going to church. But there was no church to go with her family. So what she did was she invited uh, the American missionary and the local pastor to start a Bible study right there in their garage. And that little Bible study grew from just few members of the family. They invited uh, other relatives, some neighbors, and it became a church in 1973. And this lady went to America with her family. And the church ministry goes on. And uh, in, March, in March of 2014, this lady died at the age of 100 years old. And uh, every year before she died, the family came back to the Philippines for a family reunion. Uh, my and my, me and my family were always invited by this family, and because they just want to to know what's going on, and they are so happy to know that uh, the church still uh, growing, the church is still moving, the church is being used by the Lord. And then before she died, uh, she asked her her children that. Uh, her ashes should be brought back to the Philippines and asked me to, to uh, do the, the funeral service, of which I am so very glad. You know, maybe you are, we, we, we never realized what we are doing right now. But let me tell you, what we are doing in the present is the future of someone. Amen. It's, not, it's not only the what, what is important, but it is the why of, of what we are doing is important. Our present is someone's future. Amen. Just like what David did, it says in verse 36, for David, after the service, own generation by the will of God. Let me tell you 
One day all of us, all right, will go to heaven. Just like David, he fell asleep. All of us will die. I, I, just we don't know when and how and, and, uh, and uh, when will that be. But for sure of us, we leave this earth. All of us are going to leave this body. Amen? But what matter is what we have done for the future. What we have done for the future. Many people are doing things just for the present. But not for the Christian. Amen? Not for the man of God. Not for the people who are honest serving the Lord. Because everything that he does, we do for the present. Is for the future of someone. Just like this old lady. Just like this a young widow. She started a Bible study. In her home. And then that little congregation. Becomes a church. Of which now I am pastoring. For 35 years. What she did. Then in the present. Became the future of Almansa Bible Baptist Church. And this June 3. Pastor Hernes, we will be celebrating our 45th year church anniversary. That's why we, uh, we uh, I just spent uh, 30 days here, short, why? because uh, we have other preparations in the church for our celebration. Gladstone said, tell me what the young men are doing on Sunday, and I will tell you the future will be. You know, we need to train our young people to serve the Lord. Amen. Oh, I, I'm hearing at churches in America that all that remains are old people. Very sad. And when these old people die, the church dies. And therefore, we need to reach more young people to the Lord. We need more uh, preachers to, to preach the word of God. We need more people of God to serve the Lord. Amen. That why? Because we are preparing for the next generation. The generation of people who would serve God. Amen? The generation who would serve the Lord. Maybe we would say, who is this God that we will serve? Amen? Who is this God that we would serve? He is the God that loves us. He is the God that sent us his son to give himself to the world. He is that God, the creator of heaven and earth. That's why, uh, let, let me tell you that serving the Lord is not a matter of convenience. Rather, it is a matter of conviction. It is a matter of saying, I love the Lord and I know that I serve God all of my life. So our present is someone's future. I look at my children. What they would become. Do I want them to be faithful? Then I need to show them how faithfulness is. Do I want them to serve the Lord? Then I need to show them how to serve God. Do I need to, do I need to show them the importance of God's word in their lives? And therefore I need to show them how important the word of God in our life. Amen. Because there is no way of preparing our family to serve the Lord in the future without telling them and showing them how to serve the Lord in our present time. So what we're doing in the present is for someone's future. Amen? Now let me show you some points in our text. First of all, let me tell you that the fulfillment of is best measured by how much a person serves. It says here in verse 36, David, after he had served his own generation. Now look at what David contributed in his own generation. He said, it says, he served, David, after he served his own generation. Nathan Shopper said, at the close of life, the question will not be, how much have you got? But how much have you have you given? Not how much have you won, but how much have you done? Not how much have you saved, but how much have you sacrificed? 
Not how much you were honored, but how have you served. Christian life is a life of service. <clears throat> Amen? It is a life of service. That's why you will note in, in, in verse 36, it, said, it says here that he served his own generation. He served his own generation. Let me tell you, brethren, that this is the only time we can serve. While we are while you, while you are still young, remember the Creator in the days of the youth. While we can walk, while we can sing, while we can speak, all right. While while we can share the Word of God, Amen. Serve the Lord. Serve the Lord. You know, sometimes people just like to come to worship the Lord, but never want to worship the Lord. Or never want to serve God. Amen. We worship here and we serve outside. Right? We worship here. We were encouraged here. All right? We pray to the Lord to the Lord here. We worship the Lord here. And the field is the outside world wherein we can serve God. We can serve God. How do we serve the Lord? Serve Him out of your talents. Serve him out of your gifts. Right? That's why in the scriptures, uh, when you read the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, uh, Romans chapter 12, there are diversities of gifts. The purpose is that so that everybody could not say that, well, I cannot serve the Lord because I have nothing. Because we have something in us. Amen. Something that God has given so that we could serve the Lord. Amen? Amen. Something that we have uh, here, maybe you have one, maybe you have two, maybe you have your ten. The, 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 the question, the issue is not how many, but how did you serve God? Amen. That's why there is no person among God's people who has all the gifts. The Lord, through the Holy Spirit, distributed these gifts. So that what is lacking in you, what is lacking in me, what is lacking to other Christians, will be supplied by the other Christians so that the church can serve God fully. Serve God according to your gifts and talents. I admire people who serve the Lord in their giftedness. Not to be boastful, but to contribute to the ministry of God that is serving the Lord in his own generation. And that is what we call sharing what we have to others. Amen? When you serve the Lord according to, your, according to your blessings, according to your talents, according to your giftedness, Christian, you are sharing to others what the Lord has blessed us. Amen. Now, I have seen your, your uh, building project, a very nice building, Pastor. I wish someday when I come back, uh, I would uh, step on that door of the building and say, Lord, thank you. Amen. 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 But you know what, Christian, that would not happen if you would not do something about it. Amen? There is time to pray, and there is time to act on our prayer. All right? There is time to pray and time to act on our prayer. All right? Let's contribute for that, for that building. And that is for the glory of God. Amen. Why? Because there is nothing that we can give to the Lord that's not given to us. Everything that can be given to the Lord is because God gave it to us. Amen. Amen? That's why you will always hear that uh, we cannot outgive God because when we give, it's only because God has given us something. I believe that David, when he served, he sought the best for his own people. Amen. And the same way in this church. When we serve, let us serve the best for the people of God. Serve the best for our God. Amen. That's not only for ourselves, for our self-glory, but much more for the glory of the Lord. He promoted the welfare of His people. Amen. Amen. You know, when I was a young man hearing a pastor preach, I could realize how, how, how hard it is for the preacher to, to preach. 
Could you imagine he's just like a chef? Preparing the food for every day, preparing the food for every day, preparing the food for every day. And you know what? If you will eat uh, chicken in the morning, chicken in the afternoon, chicken in the night, and the following day, chicken, chicken, all that, that chicken felt delicious. But you know, people would, oh, chicken again? <laughs> but your pastor for many, many years prepared your spiritual food. And good for your spiritual good. What we did for the present is for someone's future. When I reached my age of 60, I said, Lord, would you please add 25 years for my life? I'm now 62. And the members, you know what? When you say that, some are smiling. And I don't know why they smile. <laughs> some seems they're agreeing. And some say, that's too much, Pastor. <laughs> when I was 60. But just recently, I said, God, may I change my request? Would you please let me live until 101? <laughs> and I was telling it to the church. No longer, now they're no longer smiling. They're laughing. <laughs> and I said, I'll give you the reason. You know why? Because I wanted to see the fourth generation of my children. Right. Yeah. Only then I would say, I have been a successful father and pastor of my own children. And that's why when I, when I pastor the church, I said, Lord, I will pastor the church for 40 years. I will give my commitment to you for 40 years. And this is my 35 years. For what reason? Because I wanted to see the family grow. I wanted to see the young, these, these children go to become young men adult men, and having their own family. I wanted to see how I would pastor or even father this little church. I wanted to see how the Lord blessed the family of Almansa Bible Baptist Church. I pastored the church when I was only 27 years old. Now I am 62. Jonathan Edwards was born in 1703. Many claims he was the greatest Christian intellect that America has ever produced. By 1900, he and his wife, Sarah, with 1,394 descendants, their progeny of spring includes 100 preachers and missionaries, 100 lawyers, and dean of outstanding law schools, 80 public officials, 75 army and navy officers, 65 college professors, 60 authors of prominence, 60 physicians, 30 judges, 13 college presidents, three United States senators, one president, one vice president of USA, 295 college graduates, among whom were governors of states and ministers to foreign affairs. What a great lineage and descendants of Jonathan Edward. But I believe Jonathan Edward prepared the future of his children. He uses his present in preparing the future. Amen. Just like David, he served his own generation. Our full potential of life is best achieved by how much a person is surrendered to the will of God. You know, all of us have the problem of surrendering to God's will. Amen? I have the two. When God speaks to me for 
the ministry, it's hard for me to do that. Because I have my ambition, my own will, my wants. It has been my problem. But I think it's not only the problem of me, but every Christian has that problem with you. It says that after David served his own generation by the will of God. Uh, my, 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 uh, middle, my, my middle son. Let me tell you something about him. Oh. <laughs> Don't worry, sir. It's a good thing. You know, we're always praying as a father and a pastor. I do always want uh, my children to serve the Lord and most uh, especially becoming a preacher. But it is not my will. But it must be always God's will. God's will. Many church uh, members of the church will always say to Isaac, Isaac, you know, probably you will be a pastor. No, 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 I will not be a pastor. I don't like to be a pastor. But now he's a graduate of uh, Illinois. Oh, yeah, yeah. Day Spring Bible College. And he would be probably becoming a pastor in the near future. Amen. You see, it isn't always what we will, but it is because of what God's will. Amen. I have my will for my son, but he has another father in heaven. Amen. Who has the best will. <laughs> For him. Yes. And I am willing to be sub to submit to God's will in his life. Why? Because that would be his full potential. Our full potential in life is when we learn to achieve, to, to, to be under the will of God in our lives. And that is when our personal wants. Our inward desire would be in subjection to God. Amen. In subjection to his will. David was fully surrendered and consecrated to the will of God. When I asked my father, I said, Father, I go to Bible school. I would like to serve the Lord. He didn't say anything. Well, of course, a typical Filipino, because I was the eldest among the five siblings. Typical Filipino family is that the eldest will always all right, help the father, the family to earn. He never came from a rich family. But I know uh, my father would never agree with that. But I... <coughs> I have another father in heaven who is calling me to serve him. So one of my relatives said, Max, you would be a pastor? And I said, Lord, prove to him that he is wrong and I am right. And that was 1976. And God has proven that everything we decided for God is always right. Amen. Serving God is right. Amen. Being faithful to the Lord is right. Yes. To be used by God is right. Yes. Amen. Amen. That is our full potential. We may not reach our full potential unless we learn to submit our will, our hearts, our desire to God, our Father. Why? Because a person would never learn to submit his will to God's, to God's will or his Father's will, Christian, will neither also submit his love to God. Amen? Who are those who love God most? They are those who submit their, their will to God the most. Yes. Right? We cannot serve the Lord and love Him the better. 
unless we serve God and, and uh, submit our will to the Lord, that's the only time you can serve Him and love Him to the most. Why? Because you will realize how God has been faithful to you. Only then I realize how God has been faithful to me. I remember what David said, when my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will lift me up. I didn't say that uh, my father and my mother forsake me. No. But I remember that verse that would encourage me. The time. The time that I will be alone. But I have never been alone in this world. I've never been alone in life. God is always with me. Amen. God is always with me. When, when we got married, and uh, my wife still was working in Lee, in, in Lee Company, she resigned from her job. And her boss said, what? You will resign? What ha will, will happen to your children? How would you, how could you uh, 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 let your children study, knowing that your husband is only, 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 only a pastor? That's the emphasis, Pastor, only. Yes. Yes. You know what in the Philippines when you say, Pastor, Pastor? <laughs> and I said to my wife, you know what? I want you to meet again your boss and tell her, God did not forsake us. We only have our full potential when we learn to serve God and when we learn to submit ourselves to our God. The influence that we could have is very essential. Everybody is an influencer. I believe when David served God in his own generation, he influences his people. Right? We can influence someone to serve God. It is only then that we could serve the Lord faithfully. Paul in the book of Ephesians chapter 5 says, Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Right? What is the will of God in our lives? What's the will of God for your family? What's the will of God for for your children. What's the will of God for our church? Again, it is not about me. It is not about you. It is about our God. God has given us today our present. Let us use this for someone's future. Amen? Somebody must be influenced by godly people. It might be your children. It might be someone. What are we doing right now? What are you doing in the present? Would you not consider that your present might be someone's future? Right? Why is it that many young people today are no longer serving God? Because their parents never give them example of serving God faithfully. They would just say, you go to church. You go to at Sunday school, attend the church. But the parents would never attend Sunday school, attend the church. They have not exemplified in their lives what is faithfulness. They had never exemplified in their lives what is true service. They never exemplified in their lives what is become a faithful Christian. They have forgotten that one day they will die. And the future die. Our present. Is someone's future. Thank you for the opportunity. Amen. Well, thank you very much Pastor Manai. You know that's. Uh, a very very timely message for all of us. If you look at a trend that we see around us. It's actually killing the future generation. You know what's happening in our family. What's happening and having with our children, 
even, even among Christians, you know, we're so obsessed with what I can do for myself, with what I can attain for me, not anymore concerned about the future of my children. Where it stands now, the school that we have, the schools that we have, how can the future be there if God is not there? Amen? God who is eternal, taking away, taking God out of the school, taking God out of the community, and taking God out of our, out of our homes. You know, it is our duty, a noble duty, for us who claim to be children of God and to be people of God, to see to it that God is preached. Amen? That his word is shared. That we are paving the way for the coming generation. Especially our children. Our young people. A parent came to me and said, you know, pastor, it's really difficult to raise teenagers nowadays. Because the attraction of the world is much, much greater than us. Peer pressure is too much. They listen to their friends more than they more than they listen to their parents. That's why I told her. That's why, as long as you have the opportunity to bring them to church, bring them to church. Amen. As long as you have still have the authority to tell them to pray and read the Bible, do that. Amen. It doesn't matter if they get mad at you. I remember when we were growing up, my father would force us to go to church. And when you go to church, sit on the first pew. We would be there. And we hated that. But you know what? Looking back, I really praise God for what he did. Because the one thing that reminds me are the things that he told me about God. The one thing that our children will always remember are the things about the Lord. Even my daughter, every time he, she would speak to me, she would tell me, Pastor, I, you know, Dad, I hated you when you were raising me. And she was honest. I didn't like the way you're friendly to the people, that, but not me. You know, you did this to me. But you know what? But you were right, Dad. You only told me about God, how to be faithful, how to serve God. Our children can only, can only have the future. When God is in it. Amen. All of us here. Are living today. Even if you don't have children. You're living. For somebody in the future. Amen. God has allowed you. Because God has, 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 has chosen you. To touch somebody in the future. Can you imagine we're so important that the gospel that we carry has eternal life? Right. No, that's even a greater future. That's everlasting future. Right. There's a future that will never cease. A future that will never stop. That's why it's important for us to share the goodness of the gospel. I don't know about you tonight. That touched my heart. Praise God. I appreciate the message. Right. You're 62 years old. I'm turning 65 in October. And sometimes I'm wondering what I just prayed, you know. I had a chest pain the other day. I said, Lord, give me 10 more years. That means I'm 65, maybe 75. And this morning I said, Lord, can you add another 10 years? <laughs> You know, can you have another 10 years, 85 years? And maybe I, maybe I, I will still bargain to God. Lord, can you, can you allow me to live until 101? Okay, there, there you go. <laughs> and I was telling Sister Amber, you know, I said, I, I, I am not afraid to die. Somebody asked me, you're taking time bomb. You can die anytime. You can collapse anytime. I told Sister Amber this afternoon when I was talking to her, I said, you know what? What's, what I'm afraid of is 
is the question where I would be when I collapse. Can you imagine that's what I'm thinking? When I be with somebody who will take care of me, will pick me up? Okay? When I be with, with people who will, who will bring me to a safe place? Okay? And then uh, I'd like to be able to live for my grandchildren and see them go to college and see them come to church. You know, I think about the church. I think about the young people. I want to see them grow and serve the Lord. I want, I want, I want the facility in this church. I want to enjoy what, 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 what God has given us in this, in this ministry. I want to be able to really pursue God's plan in IBBC. I still want to see that. Amen. And I think I'm going to keep on bargaining to God. Amen. And praise God, He keeps on allowing me to live. Despite the fact that the devil wanted me to die a long time ago. See? Because we believe. We believe in the next generation. We believe in eternity. Because we believe in God. Let's all stand please. The Lord has spoken through his preacher. As we all stand. Bow our eyes and close our eyes. I want you to consider your life right now. Are you just living for yourself? Or are you just living because of your own personal ambition? Are you living for someone? Prepare somebody for the future of service? I believe this is an important question for, to, to ask ourselves today. Do you care for someone? For well, the music plays slowly. Maybe you would like to come to the altar and pray. Lord, I do care. For the future generations. I do care for my children. I do care. For the future. Of my children. I do care for the future of this church. Why don't you come. To the altar and pray here. Why don't you come and pray? Lord, dear Heavenly Father, thank you, O God, for speaking to our hearts tonight. For the message, O Lord, that really began a spark in our hearts, O Lord, about what we ought to do in this present time. That what we do is not just for ourselves. And thank you for choosing us, O oh Lord, to pave the way for the coming years. For our children to have the future, not only the future, but to, all, to have eternal life. Opportunity to serve you, to live for you. And that is the work of IBBC. You have given us school for the same purpose. You've given us church planting ministry for the same reason.
the ministry's present, oh God, in this church, oh God, is based on that reason. And thank you for choosing us. It's only because of your grace you have counted us worthy. I pray, O oh God, for our children. I pray, O oh God, for our teenagers, your young people, O oh Lord. For the parents raising their children and teenagers, O oh God, that you give them special wisdom and special understanding, O oh Lord. That they will never give up on saying the right thing, on teaching them, O oh Lord, biblical morality, and sharing with them, O oh God, the things of the Lord. We know, oh God, the things of God are the things of God are so very unpopular today. Politically incorrect. Help us, oh God, not to be influenced by that political correctness. But continue to be firm, oh God. Firm in our stand for the truth. I pray, O oh God, for this church. I pray, O oh God, for all the pastors and preachers represented tonight. I pray, O oh God, for our speaker, Pastor Manai, and his ministry. And thank you for giving him this years, O oh Lord, of serving you. Would you bless, O oh God, his church as they celebrate, O oh God, their anniversary next month. I pray, O oh God, for the, for the future of our children present today. The future might not be so bright. The future might be dim. But with you, O oh God, on our side, we can still be victorious. We can still overcome. We can still conquer. And thank you for that. I pray, O oh God, as we Approach, O oh Lord, the conference, Bible Mode Conference, and our anniversary this coming Sunday, O oh God, prepare our hearts. That we can be able to express to you, O oh God, our appreciation by bringing in souls into your house of faith for them to listen the blessed gospel. I pray, O oh God, you give us victory. Empower the pastors and the preachers, our speakers, O oh God. I pray, O oh Lord, that you rebuke the hinderer, rebuke the enemies, O oh Lord. That your children, O oh God, will never succumb, O oh God, to the attacks of the enemies. That they'll never give up. But to pursue, O oh God, your will in our lives. And I pray, O oh God, even tonight, as we go back to our respective homes, that you bless us. Bless our homes. Bless our children. And, oh, God, we have many concerns. Many concerns have been addressed, oh, Lord, to me personally, by parents, by people, oh, God, about their children, about their neighborhood, oh, God. And I pray. Just recently, oh, Lord, there's, again, a casualty, oh, God, because of, of somebody gunning the students in Texas. I pray, oh, Lord, that you protect us. Protect our children. Protect our students, O oh Lord. Protect our churches. Take away the fears in our hearts, O oh Lord. We claim your power. We claim your goodness upon us, O oh God. For we give you all the praises and all the glory. In Christ's name, we ask all these things. Amen. Let's all stand now, please, and let's sing our, our last hymn. Okay, thank you very much, Pastor Manai. Okay, thank you very much. Let's sing. <clears throat> Let's sing church with a great heart for souls. From the Bible we read, Jesus Christ as he led, he had gathered all soon. He saved and began his church to proclaim the great word. He had called them to take up his
Peter to come uh, in the front to close us in a word of prayer. Let's talk to God in prayer. God our Father, we thank you for your word. We pray, O oh God, that you will bless it to our hearts, that we will hear and not only be hearers. O oh God, our Father, we come before you with thanksgiving because we know that you have promised that you will guard our going out and our coming in, that you will protect us from before and from behind. You say that you will send your angel in Exodus 23 to go before us. And so, Father, tonight we make a claim to your own word and pray that as we move towards the great celebration of your church, you will protect our members, our children, our women, our brothers, our sisters, our fathers. We bring them before the throne of grace and ask that by the power of your blood and by the power of the name that is above all other names, the name of Jesus Christ, that Lord our God, you will keep us together and bring even those who will be celebrating with us from far and near, by air, by land, by sea, you are the omnipresent God. So, Father, take glory in the name of God, our Father, the Holy Son, 